want to thank Eric and Kelly and the college for the opportunity to present my thoughts on reoperative pelvic surgery, Hartman reversal. I have the following disclosures. Hartman was a French surgeon uh, born in 1860. He described the Hartman procedure in 1923 for cancers of the upper rectum as an alternative to the Miles procedure or APR. Very prolific in his work uh, with more than a thousand abdominal surgeries a year. Before I talk about Hartman reversal, let's just talk for a second about thoughts regarding um, A to doing the Hartman procedure. So if you're gonna do a Hartman, what to do? For me, if the disease is in the upper uh, sigmoid and the pelvis is calm, I'll go down to the top of the rectum so I can plan a straight lap Hartman reversal. If the disease is in the upper area, but the pelvis is a mess, I'll leave some rectal sigmoid so I can come back uh, and refreshen that up uh, when the sepsis is resolved. I'll tag the stump and I'll tack it to one side. If the disease is distal and the pelvis is a bomb, that's a tough scenario. Take out what you need, leave behind what you can, tag it with two stitches, a uh, long left, two tails, one short on the right, and wait six months. If I'm thinking about a laparoscopic uh, Hartman reversal, if I did the primary procedure laparoscopic, I'll do a diagnostic laparoscopy. I love a straight lap Hartman and a straight lap Hartman reversal. If the lap Hartman was done elsewhere, I'll do a little peak port, lower midline, if there's lots of adhesions or sepsis. Take a look inside. If there's not a lot of sepsis, do a hand-assisted approach. If it's not that bad, I'll consider uh, an optical trocar. Um, and something that's changed, if I do laparoscopy, I don't start at the stoma. We used to do that way back when. I don't think it helps. Um, do I even think about laparoscopy? If, I, if there's been an open Hartman, I'll consider a lap reversal if I did the open Hartman and I left myself a love notes that says, uh, you can try to do this laparoscopically. If it's an open Hartman done elsewhere, uh, I'll consider it, but if there's a midline incisional hernia or a description of dense adhesions, I'm not doing it and it's gonna be uh, an open procedure. If it looks favorable, consider optical or cut down, whatever your preferred method. Um, do you put in stents if you're gonna do a laparoscopic Hartman reversal? Well, usually for me, stents and laparoscopy don't go together. Um, so uh, I'll do stents if I'm thinking I'm gonna dismobilize the flexure laparoscopically. But remember, there can be injury to the ureter or to the kidney from stents. It's not a benign procedure. Uh, when they come to the office, do your homework. Read the notes. How long is the stump? How much colon do you have left? Look at the path report. Review imaging to assess the stump and the colon length. Uh, maybe a flex sig in the office or a water soluble enema to assess the length of the stump. And if the colon looks short, think about a Trumbull or Deloyers. We'll talk about that. You got to ask about incontinence uh, prior to the Hartman. Uh, when was their last colonoscopy? Did they tolerate a prep? Do a rectal examination. It might surprise you. Stump length and rectal tone uh, equal, do we go forward? Short stump, bad tone, the functional consequences are significant, especially in the elderly. And I'd say half the time, we never move forward. Uh, what are the stopping points? If it's a redo open pelvis, you know you're going to have a hard time. You're going to stop for hemorrhage. But do you talk about it in a male? What about sexual dysfunction? If you need to go that low anteriorly? Uh, Dr. Marcel, I, I didn't know about that. Hmm. Let me give that some thought. Uh, also make sure you discuss about the need for proximal diversion at the time of the pelvic reoperation. Intraop, I like a split leg table. I will scope everything. I'll scope the stump and clean it out, put in some betadine. I'll scope the colon. Uh, can the rectum accommodate a sizer? Try one up. If the colon is short, think about a Turnbull or Deloyers. Uh, did you think about that ahead of time? Did you look at imaging to be sure? Turnbull described his technique where you take the mid-transverse colon, bring it to the right side, and bring it through an ileal mesentery between the ileal colic and the uh, SMA. Great option. If you have less colon to work with, think about a Deloyer where everything's based upon the ileal colic pedicle, shift the ascending colon or hepatic flexure downward, take out the appendix, uh, Delaware Belgian surgeon described this in 1964. Um, if I'm going open, uh, I'm having stents. I'm going midline. I'm going to go in the upper abdomen. I, and, I, and I think you need a system. Take the small bowel off the abdominal wall. Move the small bowel to the left of the midline. Move the small bowel out of the pelvis. Put in a book walter. Put in a wound protector. Begin the pelvic dissection. Leave the stoma alone for now.
assess the stump, put up sizers or endoscopy to try to figure it out. If it's easy, peel it away from the bladder. If it's hard, start at the promontory and uh, as Tracy Hall would say, circle the enemy. What does that mean? It means if it's stuck anteriorly and it's stuck posteriorly, maybe the best option is left or right. Uh, maybe go down along the side, go to the area that hasn't been dissected and find the free area and then work your way back up. Uh, in a woman, go down below the vaginal cuff, come, away, come back up, put in a sizer, put in a scope, maybe a sizer in the vagina, be prepared for a bladder test and remember your stopping points uh, when you're there. Do you need to get it all out? If you've got small bowel that's stuck into the pelvis, you create a uh, enterotomy, there's a piece of small bowel in the pelvis, scrape off the mucosa, you don't need to get rid of the whole wall. Colon is stuck to the ureter. Uh, leave a little piece of colon wall on the ureter, scrape off the mucosa, burn it. You don't need to have a ureteral injury even with a stent in place. Anastomosis, uh, 28, 29 is my preferred. I like the small size or the mesial sizer. I'm putting this up. Uh, did you lavage? Did you um, check the stump endoscopically? I love a double purse string. If I've beaten up on the top of the Hartman, uh, I love the reusable purse string device. If that won't uh, work uh, and the primary stapler will not go up, take a whole second stapler, leave the anvil in place. Now it passes up if the sizers pass up, take off the rectal stump, do a, take the uh, second dummy anvil head off, do a purse string around the, the trocar of the stapler, anvil, connect. 25 millimeter stapler is acceptable. Um, Baker, possible. Put the anvil in the rectum, bring the colon down, bring the stapler through the side of the colon, out through the end, close off the colon with the TA. Not a huge fan of reverse Baker where um, you pass this, the uh, stapler up from the bottom, come out anteriorly through the rectum. Just remember, if you're coming out close to the TA staple line, uh, it could become ischemic. And always an option to hand sew an air leak test. I think posterior mobilization to straighten out the rectum may be overrated in some cases, unless you can really feel the kink when you put the sizers up. Air leak test everything. After you've done an air leak test and it's negative, consider the condition of the bowel, the abdomen, and the patient. They all have to be favorable for me not to divert. Anything is not favorable, I'm doing a diversion. Dictate it in your note so somebody else will understand why you did what you did. Um, colostomy site. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, there's a, a obviously hurting at the colostomy site. Are you going to do an on layer of mesh, absorbable, biologic, or synthetic? What about component separation? Here's my option. Here's a colostomy hernia, six centimeters uh, width, too tight. I go out laterally. I do a superficial component separation right through the stoma site, uh, dissect out the uh, external oblique fascia for the distance of the, um, of the wound. Now you've got some distance, close the posterior rectus sheath and peritoneum with a running suture, close the anterior sheath with interrupted figure of eights with zero PDS, place all the sutures and then pull. You'll see the distance you've made up by doing component separation. Uh, tie them down, don't leave any tails so they don't spit. Put a drain in out laterally, secure the drain with a chromic so it stays where you want it, just for about three days, put it in the local, close it, put a, uh, a pen rose in, secure that, and you're done. A nice option for colostomy hernia. All right, conclusion. If you think it's easy, straight lap apartment or hand assist. If it's hard, stents and circle the enemy. In the office, do your homework, do a rectal examination, assess the stump, Weak anus, short stump, keep the stoma. In the OR, uh, prep the stump, dummy anvil head uh, for the second stapler, air leak test, dictate everything and consider component separation. Thanks very much for the opportunity for me to give you my thoughts on Hartman reversal.